from Euro Fanatic here with The More. Welcome to episode 34 of The Drive. Pacific Championships is done and dusted, which means the 2024 season is done and dusted. Um, the off-season content, we're going to start getting into that again very shortly. Um, bringing out TikToks and stuff like that. We've also just started the Wrestling Fanatic uh, page, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Um, Maybe Facebook later? Yeah, potentially Facebook. But YouTube, uh, we're doing potties just like this, even longer though. Um, honestly, they're probably better. They're probably at better episodes because I am like addicted to WWE, as you can tell. I know it's my travel chief. Um, but yeah, like, we'll, okay, we'll get into the Super Championships a bit later. But a good, a good little uh, segue. To, to, to start our peak off-season content, okay, I'm let's talk about who who do you think in the NRL would be a good WWE wrestler? Okay, top of my head, I reckon here's a put on the spot a bit here. Well, but, um, I reckon right now, um, I think the best Brandon one. Smith. I reckon for the chat, Brandon Smith. Brandon Smith, yeah, like well, on the mic. James Graham, my James Graham had his match against the example Ricky South. Yeah, and Backman. Yeah. Teaming up with Jack J. Bond, so I reckon maybe James Graham can teach him a few moves with a smack talk. Yeah. I I can feel Blaine Nass though, he's a giant. Yeah, was, that's that's who I was thinking. Nelson said for Solomon Moon off. He he's now in uh, on his way to Bali again, so who knows what he's gonna get up to it over there. Oh, man. Um but I, he was the first one that came to my mind. Nelson said for Moon off. Imagine a six foot two I don't even know if he'd be that tall compared to how tall is he? Uh, he's 200 centimetres I think oh my god so I think that's actually like 6'6 six, six or something um, imagine him dealing a nasty choke slam or something oh. he gives me Earth Kane vibes yeah. eh? just a uh, big nasty bastard um, who oh. uh, I could see someone like a Xavier Coates being like a high flyer or okay, okay he's a small bloke that's a lot of chat or Renata Mortalo yeah. But he's got the chat. Oh, Jerome Luai. Oh, Jerome Luai. He'd be a good bag. He's a good heel, man. He'd be a good a good new member to one of the pod lines. Oh, of course. Yeah. Oh. Um, he's Samoan. He's probably related somehow, eh? Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I reckon... Uh, honorary use. Nathan Cleary. He's part of the... <laughs> yeah. Honorary <laughs> use. <laughs> so you got, you got Stephen Crichton, Brian Toto, Jerome Luai, and the honorary use. Nathan Cleary, that's that's perfect. That, that's great. Um, um, who else? Uh, oh, the Burge, oh, Tom Burgess. He's a good for a laugh, I reckon. Yeah, like a like a Sheamus. Yeah, oh, a bit of a like Sheamus a, or a, like a Drew McIntyre. Oh, yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, like I think because uh, we've had a one NRL player, Daniel Vito, go over and wrestling WWE. Grayson Wall played some, I think, schoolyard stuff, but yeah, nothing, true. nothing too good. He was a hell of an athlete, but you could just see, yeah. like, ooh, like sometimes after shows we go footy and like let's just chuck the ball around, like, alright, he's, he's got something. He's a Roosters fan. Also was a part of that James Graham uh, wrestling thing that he got involved in. PWA, then. Uh, PWA, PWA, yeah. Um, but like wrestling. Jim, Jimmy Graham getting in the ring was something I didn't think I'd see it. That was all on the bingo card, man. No. That was not. A... Um, but yeah, like. This we we just we just love our WWE um, just as much as we love our footy um, and yeah we've started a brand new page so if you're interested in wrestling at all um, go check it out the Wrestling Fanatic I'll put the link in the description um, I've never done that before so uh, but I'll put the link to the YouTube in the description there'll be a video rough it comes out roughly the same day or two apart um, for the drive so it's roughly Tuesday Wednesday Thursday. Um, so stay tuned for that. They're, they're, they're great episodes. They're fun. Um, yeah. So keep an eye out for that. Okay, we'll get into the, the actual footy footy. Uh, Pacific Championships. The final will add all four games on the Sunday. Um, the first two women's games. Samoa beat Papua New Guinea 34 to 12. Samoa are now in the 2025 Pacific Cup over Papua New Guinea. Wow. So I long. think that that's probably a good thing. Because yeah, Papua New Guinea got beat 84 0 oh, uh, against Australia yeah. in round one. Yes. I think Samoa is a bit more competitive than Papua New Guinea, to be honest. Well, you, um, you told me the team before, I'm like, all right, yeah. there's, there's a lot more talent in Samoa. There's quite a bit more NRL W talent. Um, so I think it's going to be good. Uh, 2025 is going to be a lot closer. 
Um, they're just going to be a little bit more competitive, uh, to be fair. I hope so. Um, with more and more W talent than that. Um, and then so Papua New Guinea are now relegated to the bowl, but I think that's that's probably a better place for them. Like to they'll they they'll, really. they'll actually be able to be competitive in the games that they're playing. I hope like so. them against Australia, New Zealand, they they just can't compete. Look out, shape them. man. Yeah. Like what the hell? Um, and then Jillaroo's beat New Zealand twenty four to four, and they have won the twenty twenty four Pacific Cup. Oh. Um, we'll move on to the men's the first game. Which is weird that it was the first game, but it kind of makes sense because if it was at 6.30, that game was on gem, so... Um, oh, just move it around somehow, like, yeah, like I don't know, know just fucking use a full and over, right? <laughs> Fuck them off. Nah, you don't need to worry about the Trump winning the election or anything, it's not that important. But they eat the cats and dogs. He's going to tell you that. He's eating cats and dogs. And... He got the uh, like podcast with bloody Undertaker as well, man. Yeah, like, Trump, Trump's, Trump was getting out. Maybe he could jump on the potty, hop in the back seat for the drive. Yeah, sure uh, <laughs> but um, so Australia beat Tonga twenty to fourteen. Tonga actually came back near the end. It was a pretty good game. Mate, I think Tom Alola looked like he's damaging best again. He was on that man. Tom Tom Alola was on my shoeing. Afanua Blake looked great. Katara looked. Pretty damn good, man. Like, I think Tongans made such a great count of themselves. Yeah, they beat New Zealand to make the final. Um, New Zealand had to fight against Papua New Guinea to avoid getting relegated. Yeah. That that would have been a very interesting. That'd be a shocker. That would have been. Up. They they did end up pumping Papua New Guinea fifty four to twelve, but that could have like if Papua New Guinea somehow pulled off an upset, that would have. You know, that would have been the all-time upset. That would have been the biggest upset of all time. And imagine seeing New Zealand at the Pacific Bowl. That would have been... Uh, well, who was your man of the match from the Aussies? Um, Tommy Turbo scored two tries. He, uh, he got held up a couple of times too. Yeah. I um, think Dearden was for me. Dearden got the most fantasy points. Oh, he just like, to me, just always on the board trying to create. Three try assists. Uh, 146 meters, three tackle breaks, three line breaks, two offloads. Um, didn't play really well. Um, I just think also, shout out to actually the whole pack. Income a tiny little bit. I'm gonna be buzzing. Savila Havili. Yeah. Holy cow. If he plays like this during the rugby league season, I want him as my starting hooker. And then you can have Momozulu or Humphreys. He was that good. He'd been in the team of the tournament for Pacific Championship. 100%. There you go. He was a gun. Him and Green um, were probably my well, probably Havili 14 and then Green 9. But, mate, that was so good. Yeah. Havili! <laughs> he never gets put on his back. He's just so yeah, big. Knows. He doesn't get put on his back. Oh, mate. No, that's it. I hope he plays like this for Sass next year. He was so good. I thought, I, thought, I think he's always been like... He's been solid. Yeah. But just too um, injury prone. Like, yeah. Just any problem. I think pretty underrated overall. Um, well, I think I've got a stat for you. He's in the top 20 in NRL for appearances off the bench. Oh, wow. All the time. I'm pretty sure I saw Clarkie put Clarkie. a post up. Um, but yeah, he's, I think he's a bit done on maybe close to 60 or something on the bench. I'm uh, sure. I've seen these Clarkie posts, so let me find it. I know, I just... Uh, Saliva Havili is number 20, I think. 108. 108. Mate, see? Thank you, Clarkie. For the stat. But the um, Dockers are still shit. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Australia barely beating Tonga. Oh, um, mate, I saw it. I think just they're always on top of those forwards rolling forward. Just Australia had to defend their asses off and they played did well. Yo was probably good too. Yep. Defensively, I reckon. I don't know how many tackles it just felt like he was tackling a lot though. Um, I also think the bunker dudded Tonga a little bit. You reckon Tonga? Kotoa scored a try on the left wing. <clears throat> <coughs> oh, sorry guys, I feel a bit sick. I die quietly next time. Yeah. Um, Katoa scored a try on the left wing, and the ref claimed obstruction because Turbo made a bad defensive decision. The halfback did his job. No, Lola here, the 5'8, sorry, did his job. Yeah. He engaged the line where Turbo had to commit to him. Yeah. Getting the one minute advantage on the outside. The ref, the bunker calls it back for no try. I'm like, what are you doing? And then. Up the other end. Yeah. I think Turbo's try? Same thing happened, but he gives a try. I'm like, mate, the inconsistency was fast. 
Yeah. Uh, Australia are up 20 to 4 with uh, 25. Uh, 20, 20, road rage coming out again. Uh, 25 minutes to go. Uh, Australia are up 20 to 4. Um, but Tonga started to pull it back a bit. They made it 20 to 14 with 7 to go. But Australia held on. Oh, it's such a um, good performance. But yeah, like the. You, so do you think Tonga could have won that game? 100%. 100%. The completions in the first half was good. I just think the ref, not outright cost Tonga because they had the opportunity, but like, like you call a very similar thing one end and then do the opposite for the other end. It doesn't work like that, mate. You need to be yeah. consistent. Um, and then we'll move on to the, the main event uh, New Zealand versus Papua New Guinea. New Zealand win 54 to 12. Thanks. Uh, I got a hot take for this one. At half time, I think it was 22 to 4, right? Am I correct? 22 to 4? 22 to 6. 22 to 6, thank you. Yep. I think PNG a half time like could have been winning the match. They didn't look they didn't look 16 points worse than New Zealand. Mm. Then the second half and SJ yeah. turned it on. And when SJ turned it on, there's not much better. Yeah. One final dance or swan song for SJ. Feeding Casey McLean. I think it was it actually got five tries this and Casey McLean got five tries in debut. Uh, Casey McLean got four tries. He's the second youngest player to score four tries in a test match oh, behind yeah. Peter Mumsawas. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, the Greeks have invented rugby league, eh? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Sean Johnson had five tries. Yeah, I said that, didn't I? You said four. Oh. Five tries this. Oh my god. For Sean Johnson. Wow, is this. Um, Casey McLean scored four tries, three line breaks. Uh, Keanu Kinney ran for 300 metres. Um, yeah, he, he stole the show too. Man. Yeah. Dangerous every time he had the ball. Very dominant from New Zealand. Mate. Um, so, yeah, PNG stayed, that means PNG stayed in the bowl and yep. New Zealand stayed. Which, um, I think if the commentary actually got their job right for once, yep. the Pacific Championship next year is going to be Samoa, Tonga, New Zealand, Australia. So, Samoa? Yeah. Are they a part of the... I think comment, that's what commentary said. Next year it's going to be... Um, oh yeah, because so Samara joining the Pacific Cup. I I don't understand it. I, I think like, that's what they said. Commentary. I don't get why Samoa wouldn't be a part of this Pacific Cup, and like you have England versus I don't know. I will have to take France. turns. I have it take turns. Out of those top tier nations. Yeah, but like I I just don't understand how Samoa. If you're doing a Pacific Championships and you don't have Samoa, who uh, like for the second best team, I yeah, second third best team. Um, especially out of the Pacific Islands, they're probably the top team. Um, but like, it, it's just weird not having them. Yeah, it's different. Like, uh, <laughs> that you you haven't faced England in two games, not even three. They did get beaten both, but they were both played in England. So it's like it's 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 really weird. I, I like. What are, your, what are your thoughts, now the Pacific Championships is done, what are your thoughts on it as a whole? I like it, but I, I don't know what I would do. I would leave the Pacific Championship or have a, each team versus each other three times. Yeah. Like, have like an Australia-England series, like, have an Ashes. Yeah. And then, like, say, like say Cook Islands and PNG can have an Ashes in Fiji, and someone else can do a three-game series. Yeah, I like... I, I'd rather have a, a couple of three-match series as compared to... The championship, I reckon. Yeah, I, you get probably more footy like that anyway. I, I don't know what I prefer because, like, um, the I like how the Pacific Cup and the Pacific Bowl they keep them separate, so it's not like Australia versus Cook Islands, who have a population of about I don't know ten thousand or something. Not much. It's it's very small population. It's like they will not stand a chance against Australia. Um, but like it. Having so having them in two separate comps is a good idea. It's just not having Samoa and it feels weird. Um, you could have like England versus France or England versus Serbia, Wales. Or Mate, it's fair thing. Serbs can have Jake Chaboyevic now or Tom Turbo if, if if he wants to play for Serbia. Yeah, but that's all right. Uh, like Tommy Turbo is too good to leave out of Australia, so I don't think he'll leave play him out. Serbia. Yeah, go play for Serbia. You have, well, I'll bribe you. I'll get you some. You and your tata and your dad and I can have some rakia. We have a good time. It'll um, be fun. Maybe the World Cup if 
Uh, but I don't. Because like, think about if the truck were a plate there, just have a plate for some yeah. I don't think so. Have no. Jerbo or Bevan? No. So they've never played. Wow. Well. They should though. You'd be good. Yeah. At the at the World Cup, maybe. Uh, Hopefully, but I doubt it. Yeah, I doubt Cause it. Because I know he's. I'm maybe, hoping like maybe Jerbo and Bevo. Jerbo and Bevo. I don't know about Jerbo. Unless, um, oh, well, that'd be nice if Turbo played for Serbia, then we'd yeah. have Latro and Hammer in the centres. Yeah. That, like, Australia that, would be fine without them. It's just, uh, they're too good to, like, Turbo especially is too good to leave out. Yeah, because um, he can, uh, he can be a mad forward in as well, yeah. if you want. Um, he fights anyway, so. But yeah, I think the, like, a, uh, who, who... Who would be the next best for England to verse? Would it be France? Would it be Lebanon? Would it be... Well, I think you have to think about Europe. Greece. Yeah, and probably... Or well, Ireland... Oh, no, Luke, you can't play there anymore, can you? I'd say... I'd say Lebanon or France. I'm just um, trying to think to my head. Um, and, like, you could have them versing in three match series. Uh, or have, like, a European comp or something. I don't know. Yeah, it'd be tricky. Um, but, like... We'll have to look if you're that. doing... If you're doing the Pacific... Yeah, maybe a European comp, maybe like a... European Championship. Yeah, like similar specific, It's it won't get as many, Jeez. like, people watching, but it's a good way to get that international well, footy in, without, without, having, without having Samoa playing in England, like it, when when Samoa could be in the Pacific Championships, it, I just, it, it doesn't make sense to me. That's why I do the three-match series thing. Yeah, um, but then, then like, uh... Yeah, I, I could see the three match series working actually and taking turns every year. Like, like it can be Australia, Australia New Zealand. Because I was going to say Australia versus a team would take like seven years apart, but Australia wouldn't be versing a Cook Islands in a three match series. But they, it's still like, I'll do that for three years and then like the fourth year could be the World, the World Cup. Cup yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. um, that could also give a better reflection of the top seeds in there too. Yeah. Like having Australia versus Samoa in a three. Game cup for a year. Yeah, I, I, I could see that working too. I don't know. I don't know the solution because there's so many different ways you can go about it. But um, like it, the main problem for me is no Samoa. So how is it the Pacific Championship? Know what I mean, uh, it's a tricky one. Um, okay, so we'll move on to some signing. Actually, no, we'll move on to this new kickoff rule that. Uh, oh, is, it got reversed though. Uh, yeah, I've, the reverse I've seen card. That. I've seen that. Um, the the rule that was getting talked about is uh, just let me find it. Sorry, I can find the issue. If you kick, I know it. If you kick the ball over the twenty meter line, is that be a seven tackle rule? set? Yeah, kick offs are going to be on the opposition twenty meter line on the full result in a second seven tackle set. When I read that right, I'm thinking seven tackle set from the twenty meter line. Is that how it was going to be? That's why I'm because then. Because it was, it's apparently to uh, the NRL were looking to change the kickoff uh, to reduce the spate of head injuries in the game. How would that, if it's if if it's if you kick it down the full and it's a twenty meter seven tackle set, I understood you that. would rather do that than kick it out short and it like if you kick it out the full now. Uh, before this rule, it's a 50 meter penalty kick for touch. That's like 30 meters, six times um, on your 30 meter line. If you're if you're kicking out the four and it, and it starts from the 20 meter line, seven tackles, you would rather do that. Therefore, you're actually more likely to kick forward. I don't think it'd still be the 20 thing. I still think they keep the 50 meter penalty if you kick out on the four. Surely, yeah. That, that's a big f up in my opinion. Where it's just like, and then you what, still get so, you still get the heavy contact though. It's, I don't get it. So if you kick it far, uh, far, it's a fifty meter penalty. You kick the touch is thirty, but you get seven tackles. I'd rather like I don't kick out my four will still be the same, right? Yeah, but it's just one extra tackle. Yeah, kick on the four will be the same, I reckon. The, the, it's, it's and but yeah, the if you get over the twenty, then it's like a seven tackle set. Yeah, but seven tackles set from where the twenty meter one? Yeah. From wherever I think, wherever you get the ball, and get tackled. Like, so if you go, say, like you kick the ball on the to the ten meter line, the seven tackle set, you get tackled on the twenty. So the, the, the first tackle will be tackle zero. You know what I mean? Yeah, but like, if if I'm if I'm now the attacker, I would want them 
I wouldn't want them to kick far now because you'd rather have a 50 meter penalty than a 20 meter seven tackle set. Like, I, yeah, you can't I'm just leave the ball, surely not. Anyway, the, apparently then the, the, you know, reverse car on because it's so stupid anyway, so. Yeah. Like, I like, understood it, but I think you're overcomplicating it right now, which I, I love you, but I think you I know, but like, if, if it's, it, I haven't seen anywhere where it's a seven tackle set, but if it's a seven tackle set from the 20 meter mark, you're losing 50 meters as an attacker anyway. Cause like, like, I'd rather you kick the ball anyway. It. Yeah, if like, you're the thing with you, if, like, like alright, one more just compared to like the. If this is to stop the. If this is to stop head injuries, I don't think it. I think it's the opposite. I think if you're kicking. If you're. Like, 20 meter. A 20 meter 7 tackle set is less of a punishment than a 50 meter penalty. Right? Yeah. Then, so why would you not kick it further now? This is going to. This would have made you want to kick it further because there's less of a punishment for kicking it out the fall uh, like over the dead ball line I don't get it it's a stupid rule this is why it's just leave the kick off that's why I'm like like I think I told you the stat when Buzz Rothfield put it on 360 yeah it's like one every 300 or 400 kickoffs then there's a concussion I can live with that there's about a thousand two hundred concussions in oh concussions in the whole there's never going to be one that two hundred kickoffs kickoffs or kick restarts in NRL right so, one in three, three a year, I know it's not perfect, but I can handle that. Yeah. It's either it's a contact sport, shit's going to happen sometimes. Yeah. Shit happens in a contact sport. And a lot of them have stuff to do with tech, uh, tackle technique rather when, than... Yeah, because you the person in the middle usually gets stuck yeah. in between the two big boys and they've got nowhere yeah. to move. I just didn't understand the rule, like, if it was, like, it would actually increase people kicking it further, therefore... Increasing if it's if it's if it's how I'm imagining the rule in my head, um, so I don't understand that completely. But I think it'd be about the same because, like, when you need the ball back, you still go short, but like, I, I think yeah. it's stupid. Hey, it's not that much of a punishment to do one more extra tackle, I think. Yeah, I, I just didn't completely. I would like the rule in the first place. Like, lucky, so. lucky, it's not happening. Lucky the universe card came out, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, we'll talk about some uh, signing news. Um, the big one, Gutho, has joined the Dragons. Officially. Officially, yeah. Um, yeah, I like it. Just, like in my 3 2 1 thing, I think he was my second choice, I think, for them. Yeah. Behind Kimbra. Like, it makes sense now you can have another gun fast player who's slow in the wing. Hell of an athlete. Hopefully, he'll clear up his defensive issues at fullback. But it's still hard to win to jam in or not. So, hopefully, he's not another. Rather Lara on their hands when the jam's in yeah. the slant. So. Uh, yes, moving slant or probably wing. I like then, that a lot. Yeah. I really rate that. He's got the pace. He gives me like a bit of Axe Johnson vibes though. Yeah. Um, Gutho, like I, I saw I saw SEN rank the fullbacks and they had Gutho so low. Where have him? Uh, like 11. There's a lot of gun fullbacks in that row. I'm not sure if I have him in 11. Uh, they had, no, 12. They had him below Nickel Clockstad and Will Kennedy. He's better than them too, for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, they also had Buller 16, but uh, below Sua <laughs> Final Longo, who doesn't uh, even start for his team. That's a 50-50. So, get out of here. Um, that's a 50-50 between them nah, two. Buller should have been number one. Um, uh, you and your Buller. Go Buller was 16! He's not, he should be 16, though. Where's Latrell on that? Uh, Latrell's ninth. I reckon Big Bounce back to Latrell and Uncle Lane A. This is his last yeah. chance now after you got yeah. the white lines, man, so. Latrell, like, it just it just depends on Latrell's attitude, really. Like, With Uncle it, Wayne, I reckon he's going to straighten up. Yeah. Like, this is his last chance, so. Yeah, like, Latrell, he could just not care about the game and just retire. Like, that's a yeah. very possible, like, very likely possibility when it comes to Latrell. Like, yeah. he'd be like, you know what, I'm done with the game. And then just not care and retire. Um, um, and it, it'd be something that would just like it would kill the game a bit shock everyone but it also I wouldn't shock me yeah like it would just be completely out of nowhere just like you know what that's it I'm done I'm trying Cause I'll like, say this about the okay. troll does he give you the shit sometimes yes but I think sometimes the, the media really really rub it into him oh yeah like the KK mate you had to rub it into him that was yeah. so dumb you know the, the triple M thing oh I don't care I'm sorry that was just fucking stupid yeah but other things like mate when he's doing something good, you're saying how good he is, but when he's doing something bad, you really bag him out, mate. Like, just... Yeah. There's no in-between. Just get him. 
Does he give me the shits? Yes, but let's just talk about his footy, please. Yeah. Once. Um, Not just trying to make a storyline out of everything. Like, I remember this cl big clickbait that they did on Cody and Latrell. Oh, so they take plane early, come back after the break to see what happened. And they're going to some of five, six hours away to do a footy clinic. Like, the bait that you're making perceived to be a bad guy and then you turn around after the commercial break, like, yeah. you know what I mean? The fishing ain't right for the troll. It's... Yeah, that's... It, it, it's... I think, I think he'll hopefully turn around, like, but literally quite a few players in the Rabbitohs need to... They need to get around. the arse, yeah, like... Well, it's Uncle Wayne, mate. Yeah. The, the, the Uncle Wayne's Wayne. gonna fix everything. Like, yep. Uncle er, everyone's Wayne. like, everyone's like, yep. Wayne's just gonna do it, but it's like, it's Uncle Wayne. Do you not this Uncle? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. You better I'm not. not I'm oh, not. kick you out the car. But no. But Wayne, like, everyone's just like, yep. Wayne's just easily like gonna come in and change the whole thing. And I know he can like super easily, he but will. like everyone's so confident that he's just gonna turn them around. They're gonna come come with the top four side. Excuse you me. Know? I do that. It's Uncle Wayne. Uh, Uncle Wayne yeah, is the man. I, I, he's gonna, I think. You're gonna make it to the prelim? And you're gonna lose another one. <laughs> if we take, I will take a prelim yeah. right now, but defeating him. We're not gonna win the top next year. No. I'm hoping for a top four in prelim right now. You'll make a prelim and you'll lose. There's a but though. Again. I reckon next year, again, it'll be Pampers, Storm, and South Coast to one of them in the prelim. Probably in Melbourne, in Melbourne. But see, like, see how a rabbit is so confident that they're just gonna, yeah, we're just gonna make prelims. It's like, Uncle Wayne. I know it's Uncle Wayne, and I know it's Uncle Wayne, and I know it's Uncle Wayne, but Dolphins didn't make finals in two years. But look at our squad compared to theirs. We are a lot better. Yeah, but you also, I don't know. It's like, I, I think rabbit will make the eight. I don't think they'll make top four. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't see. I, I believe can see, I can definitely see a world where you come second. I see right, a world where we can win the comp too. Yeah. Um, but, you, uh, you know what I just said, right? Yes. Um, you sure? Or you heard what I just said? Yep. We, and we can win the comp. You're crazy. Tigers have more of a chance to win the comp. You're more likely to get a spoon than even make the eight. No. Uh, you your roll and shut your if mouth. We, if we get a full spoon in a, in a row, um, you give up on I, that. I don't know what to do. You give up? Like this, this year feels different. I've said it every year, but this year feels different. Um, okay, we'll talk about we'll talk about we'll talk about the other signings. Uh, Jackson Paulo signs a two-year deal with oh. the Cowboys. It's his fourth club in four years. I've seen him at South. There's a player in there, but I don't think he applies himself. I just I want to like him. He's a he's a likable man, yeah. but just I just think he's tall, he's big, he's strong. He's got an average toe. He's just rubbish under the high wall. I just don't know. Something's missing with him. I think it's upstairs, I think. Yeah. Like, to me, he's, look at who he's gone. He, he spent a couple of years at South. They go, oh, yep, he's the centre, he's the centre. He was shit. He was rubbish. He was the moonwalker, yeah? Yeah, he was the moonwalker. Ah, that's all that matters. He does the moonwalk. He's pretty cool. And then, he was that bad. I think we had, we had to swap sides with him. Have Campbell Green on there until we figure out what we have to do. And as Eric Tass comes along and takes that spot, and Campbell Graham reverts back to his rats in the spot, and yeah. Jackson Polo chucks from the squad altogether. Uh -huh. Then he joins the Roosters. I'm like, all right. And then he comes back. Oh, he's been so good with the Roosters. I can see him playing representing footy by the end of the year. Does he make the Cowboys starting break five? No. Cowboys losing Val Holmes. I don't care. You got the Bellamy boys there. So you got Drinkwater, you Bal got Bellame, uh, Talongi, Bellamy, Labat. Maybe Burns, he played good for there last year too. I could see Polo getting in the back. No! They're all better than him. They're all better than he'll him. Def he'll definitely play games. Um, oh, of course, he's probably the or origin and injuries he's down to. But like... He's not good enough. Like he's origin, just not good or enough. Origin, they're not impacted because now... Too long, you baby. Oh yeah, too long, yeah, that's right. Ignore everything. Um, yeah. He'll play games, I don't know. He, he played for Rabbits Roosters and Manly. Yeah, um, Manly, I think, got a handful of games. Yeah, I think that was his 
boys club, to be honest. Like, I, I yeah, haven't seen him. He started OK at the Roosters. Yeah. And then he just fell off hard. Yeah. Uh, then the Bulldogs have signed another outside back, uh, Anari Tawala, for a two year deal. Um, I they don't need him. You got Montoya yeah. there. And who <laughs> don't need any more outside backs. They need, they need, they need a big middle. Yeah, they need and forwards. there's a big one on the market we'll talk about soon. Yeah. Um, speaking of middles, uh, Manly have signed a middle, but it's not Terrell May. It's Siwa C- 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 Takiyaho. Get him out there. Um, He's shit. He last played in 2022. I thought he retired, to be honest. He, he tried to go to the Super League, remember? Yeah. And they failed his medical, wasn't it? Or the Dragons failed his medical. I'm not too sure how, how it went down because I don't keep up Super League, but... There's something like um, that. Yeah, it's on a one-year deal for 2025. Probably cheapest chips, so it's not that bad. Um, I don't see it. I think it's shit. But, like, it's just depth signing, I guess. But Terrell May's on the market. Uh, May, that's the big he's, one. He's the one that matters. Uh, yeah, I'm off to near Terrell everyone, May. Everyone, I don't... Like, half these, like, I'm... I'm in a Tigers group chat where I talk about Tigers. Uh, half of us, we don't know if we want him. Like, he's so good. Why don't you want him? I know, but his attitude, like, he doesn't want to play. He literally said he doesn't feel like playing half the time. I didn't. When did he say that? I'm I didn't pretty sure it. he said that. Um, like, his attitude, whether he wants... Like, but he's that good, you kind of have to just ignore that. And... And, and get him, you know? Like, I, I want him, but, like, I can see why people don't. Um, well, the big rumours for him are, obviously, you guys, the Bulldogs, and there was another team. Who was I it? Don't remember, mm, no, I don't think it was Parra. I don't remember. I remember Tigers, Bulldogs, and the main two. I think it was maybe Dragons? Yeah, I, don't maybe. I don't know. Anyway, he's, like, the perfect signing for you yeah. guys. Yeah, I want him bad. He's but, a big four, he gives you the off game, too, with... Uh, I think we'd be in. I would pay a little bit of overs for him. He's that good. Yeah. Like, here's my thing, right? Stefano, he was pushing top five proper at like start of the year or last year. He was he was pretty. He was doing really well. And then he just stopped caring, and he became like one of our worst players. Uh, like he was pushing Origin. He was literally pushing Origin, Stefano. I remember game one, and like about three weeks out, I'm like, you know what? Nah, he's not on it. Um, he's he's not, no, I'm pretty sure he started the year well. Like he did. He started and then, awesome. And, and then, like he fell halfway through the year, and he he became like one of our worst players. Uh, and Tigers fans just absolutely turned on him. Can't wait for him to leave. But like he was pushing top five prop, pushing Origin prop, and that's what Terrell May is. But if Terrell May is also someone that, like, he could just be our next Stefano. If he doesn't feel like playing, you know what I mean. Oh, I think he's worth it's, the punt. I know, I know, he's definitely worth the like. Imagine adding that to Luai to River. Um, That's your big hole right now. Your like, forwards right yeah. now, so you need him. We Tigers. He could be your Rose Tarsi signing. Yeah, Tigers. We have five big signings coming. Uh, Luai and Taruva, obviously good signings. Jack Bird, Gerald Skelton, and Royce Hunt. Royce Hunt be standing more on the bench for you. So. They, they all have potential to be good, or all have potential to be meh and be like flops. And I'm. I feel bad. Excuse me. As you're falling, I really yeah. feel like because you can cover your back row, cover your center, five like, A if he needs. Like, like, here's the thing. Okay, so uh, Royce Hunt, he said he was going to retire. Uh, Who's Royce Hunt? Huh? How old no, is he? I think it was just he was happy with what he's done in the game. And he wasn't going to sign with anything until Tigers um, signed him. Uh, Tigers made an offer. And it's like, that can be taken two ways, right? That can be taken as... Oh, Tigers offered offered us, uh, offered him enough money. It's a good way to finish my, my career, like a lot of other old Tigers signings had. Um, that, were ready, that, that were ready to retire. They just came to the Tigers on a pay thing just to make some money and then and then piss off and retire. Just like Ray Finesta? Yep. It's just like plenty of players but um or it can be taken as I was ready to quit the game but I like what the Tigers are trying to achieve next year and I like where they're going and I like I'd like to be the, the part of that future of the club kind of thing just to oh, there's a funny thing I can say right now what you Tigers fans are just like a Netflix club it's always the next season 
Yeah, next season, next season. You can like, you might as well watch Netflix, mate. Every yeah. next season. Um, Come on, man. And then Come so, on. So man. that's Royce Hunt. Then you got then you got Gerald Skelton. Netflix Club. Ger- Gerald Skelton, he I watched him against like that Bulldogs Manly game, he put on some great shots. But apparently, like I'm pretty sure he doesn't always make great defensive decisions. No, he's like Tane He's Tane always Mills. trying to put on big shots. He's like Ruffalo and Tane Mill in the so same So I can see Skelton getting three Simbins and a send-off next year. Getting You'll fit sus- it well then, into get, the Simbin exactly, club. Exactly, getting suspended all year. Yeah, that's the Simbin club. Um, <laughs> and like, like, I have, like, he looks like he has potential to be a good player, but he also looks like he could be terrible defensively and be a reason we... Uh, like conceding points and stuff because he just wants to put a shot on. So that's another one. So, so you got Royce Hunt who doesn't know, uh, you can't tell if he's going to be good next year. Skelton, you can't tell if he's going to be good next year. Jack Bird, he um, he's kind of just been meh. Like he's been, he's shown signs of good, shown signs of meh at the Dragons. Who shoots things? No, Jack Bird. Oh, Jack Bird, yeah. yeah um, so it's like he could be on his way out, about to, re- to retire soon, finishing at the Tigers. Like, I don't I mind the events. I know, I know. Was... Again, like, I, I can see all three of them playing well, fitting in the club, doing their role, and being good signings. But I can also see all three of them becoming not good signings. So I'm scared. And Terrell May could be another one where it's like, he could be one of the props of, in, of the year, or he could be someone that, like, does not want to play and could not care less. So it's like... I, I, I want to sign him because surely all four of them can't be bad signings, right? Right? It's right. the Tigers! Right. Ne- Netflix Club! Right. Oh, he's next season, baby! Netflix Club, bro! There's even a world where Luai, he has all this pressure on him to be the guy to save the Tigers, right? And um, he, like, I I fully back Luai. I can't wait for him to join the club, but I, I don't know. Okay, can I say and something Taruva, positive? Taruva could be a Penrith system player and could join the Tigers and not be like as good as he was at Penrith. Oh. So it's like the, if, if like after after the twenty twenty two to twenty twenty three off season, I cannot be too careful now with signings because I thought twenty twenty three we are finally gonna go up on the ladder. Twenty twenty two we got our first boot. Twenty twenty three we signed Appy Crozel, Isaiah Papali'i, Clemmer, Bateman, Stains. I'm like, there's no way we go down, and we went down. Um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, now I'm like, now I have to critically analyse every single signing we make and, like, where it could go wrong. And that, yeah, that's what I'm doing this year. On? That's what I'm doing this year. I can see Skelton, Hunt, Bird, I can see them going wrong, but I can also see them doing well. Luai, I feel like will do well, same with Taruba, but I can see them not performing how they had been. They could perform like an Isaiah probably did the last two years like eh, okay shows sure, signs are good but not like not enough to keep on that yeah. big wage he was on yeah um can I, and can that's I, why i'm uh, that's why i'm scared but God. here's a, and here's me being my over top by myself if you guys make the eight i think the way it wins dalian with you dalian player yeah if um he, if he makes the eight what about the better tigers half lucky gal um i think a lot of the to get to the white to be honest controlling the team it just how it'll be yeah so, um yeah uh, if we if, if tigers even come eighth like they no. scrape eighth benji's coach of the year yeah. i do not care if bellamy goes undefeated i don't care if cleary goes undefeated if tigers make the eight if they barely scrape in like the cowboys of 2017 where they won where they made it because someone beat someone else to get them up even if that's how we make the eight, Benji becomes coach of the year, and if he doesn't, it is an absolute broad. There's no way. Tight, like, you can go undefeated with Penrith or Storm. That's not even that impressive. If you're making God. the Tigers go to the eight, that's more impressive. Um, so, uh, I, <laughs> I don't... I, I, just, I don't even care if we make the eight. I just want to not come on. Come nine for again! Yeah. I miss coming ninth because ninth we'd have games like we'd win every second third week. Now we win once every six weeks. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah, it's depressing. Yeah, it's miserable. Yeah, but then those 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 games we do win are such high highs. They 
that like but once in the blue moon is not good who, who needs drugs when you can support the west tigers like we no you're glad of a punishment maybe it's your fucking punishment kink or something no but it no but it's like when we win games it's it's beautiful it's the it's it, it. and then 360 suck you off and then what guess what happens two weeks later or the week later and not a week later because we win back to back nearly every time and then you lose but then we don't win three in a row because we we forget how to play footy after we won two in a row um, okay, enough Glazing Tigers for this week's episode. Uh, we do it every week. Uh, I do it every week. Um, you, we cry, you cry before these by the Tigers. Uh, Dean Pay has put his hand up for New South Wales coach. Oh my gosh, no. I find it... Actually, not no. I also I also saw Matt King is a likely Fuck possibility. Matt King, he's a grunk. I see Matt King as a more likely possibility as a New South Wales coach. I'd rather coach. Dean Pay than Matt King. I would rather Madge. That means you go back. Madge. Uh, I can't. I can't move on. It's like it's about like, moving on. It's though. like an X. Um, it's like an X. The X that got the way. X the good X. Way, yeah. The nice X. The Fuck one, you, X. Though. The one that just randomly. Uh, I miss Madge. Okay. Tom about uh, Madge. What do you think of the photos? Seeing the vomit buckets at, next to the cycling. Yeah, that's that's it's good signs for Broncos. Is, I don't know. Is I love. It? I think it is because you know that SAS documentary I was telling you about. Yeah. Who took SAS to army camp and they'll get flogged until they pass out? Yeah. And then they'll come back in to do the separate the white rice from the brown rice after they get flogged for that much and work yeah. out that hard till you pass out. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like I can see that being a good thing because it means he's pushing these Broncos players so hard. Yeah, but I can to. also see it no. as like a. They're neither hiding and. Oh, no, we force his vomiting. Oh no. Like they give <laughs> Walsh is giving the hand the hardy that their dad is and yeah. mummies should have given them. Yeah, like like give them the fucking. I can see the, Broncos. I, I can want, see them make the eight. I want match to be like the final boss in Mama Roads. Who's more likely to make the eight next year, Broncos or Rabbits? Oh. That is a good question. I like that. I don't know. I say slightly south because there's less egos at. Is there? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> they will listen to Wayne. Yeah. They will listen to Wayne. They fucking got their grand final, final coach sacked. I think Broncos. I think Broncos are more likely to make the eight. When you've got Madge, Madge needing, they, they need bomber buckets because of how hard Madge is training. Them. That's a good job. That's a good sign for me. I know. No, that's, that's what I'm saying. I um, think Broncos would be more like, mm, I don't know. That's, that's a tough one. Um, we'll wrap this up very soon, but we'll talk about Joseph Sueli uh, making oh. his debut in Rugby Union and them. absolutely destroying everyone. This is a proof there uh, that 15 Rugby League teams would demolish the, ro- the Wallabies. Yeah. So we might go get him a post next couple of days, maybe by the end of the week. The top fifth, a Rugby League team that would play for the Wallabies and dominate. You can I, just pick the kangaroos side and we dominate them. This is why I don't. This is why, whenever I hear rugby instead of rugby league, and they're talking about rugby league, but they call it rugby, and people just assume rugby union, even though league is better than union because we are so much better. We actually feel that we're stronger. They look like the bugs that have had ten big Macs and just like all right, just run towards there and hope for the best. Yeah, it, it's, it's. I feel like rugby league. When you think about cross codes, like Israel Falau went to AFL and was, he's very poor. Was, was he not good? No, no, no. I thought he was good. The only Big one that came out alright was Kamal Rohan. Um, yeah, okay, I thought Israel Falau did good. But um, Jared Hayden goes to NFL. He got cut in the fuck, fuck second round. I know, I know he didn't make the team, but the, ga- the times he. Like, I don't know why he didn't, though, because every highlight I saw of him, he, he ran 40 meters and. One thing, it's like, did he not? Know? Yeah. There was, but I don't know why he got cut. I don't know why he got cut. make everyone look good. Anyway. Um, okay, well, ignore everything I said then. But, um, Suwali E going to rugby union and dominating like that in his debut, it's like, well, come. Like, meanwhile, Mark Nawanganita Waze joins the Roosters, Roosters and it's like, and we, he yeah. played there because the Roosters were rest, most of their players and Sass. I think he's up against Tane Mill. No, Jacob Gaga, and he kind of bullied him in the air. I, I don't know how good Mark Nwanganita was. He was in Rugby Union, like how high he was. He, like he was a Wallaby. He must if, he, if he's going from Wallaby to New South Wales Cup, and Swilly is going from like, was he playing for Australia? 
Yeah. Surely. No. He was going from Origin to Wallabies. That's like, well, he's going straight to the top of Rugby Union. Meanwhile, the one going to eat a is going from Rugby Union to New South Wales Cup. You know what I mean? Um, There's levels to this shit. But yeah. Rugby League, better than Rugby Union. Um, I do like how Rugby Union do scrums better, though. I, I just love the, the push. Um, that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, comment below what you thought of Pacific Championships. Uh, how you would change it and comment below who you think is going to make the eight who's more likely to make the eight broncos or rabbitos let us know see you more see you more